Hello all, I am Sindhu Singh. In this video lecture, I will be discussing about reference resolution based on natural language processing. The contents in this lecture will be simple introduction on identifying what is reference, what is resolution. Then we look at so many terminologies like what is a referent, what is a referring expression, all that. Then we look at what is a discourse content context then discourse model discourse model has components and two important uh, operations then uh, references discourse is not just reference entities but also other types of reference so we have so many examples for that then we look at uh, what are the reference phenomena we basically have uh, five five types of referring expressions and three types of reference then finally, we look at uh, syntactic and semantic constraints on two references. And there are a few preferences in pronoun interpretation. Apart from this, we will also look at list of algorithms used for resolving these reference problems. Before we go to identifying what are all the problems with the references, we will have to discuss what are the basic terminologies involved. So first, a natural language expression used to perform reference is called a referring expression and the entity that is referred to is called the referent. So in our example, Rama and he are called the referring expressions and the actual entity Rama is the referent. So who Rama and he are used to refer, that is the referent. When you have two referring expressions used to refer the same entity, you call it co-refer. So here Rama and he both are called co-refer. Both of them refer to the same thing. So you call it as co-refer. Antecedent is a term for referring an expression that licenses the use of another. So in our example, we can call Rama the antecedent of then you have anaphora, which is a reference to an entity that has been previously introduced into the discourse. And the referring expression used is called anaphoric. So here in this example, we already saw the example. Rama always had a bow and arrows. He was the best archer in the whole universe. So here the pronoun he is called anaphoric. Discourse context. Let us consider a situation where my friend has a particular automobile called Acura Integra and I want to refer to it in a conversation. So in order to refer to that particular automobile, I can use it, this, that, this car, that car, the car, the Acura, the Integra or my friend's car among many other possibilities. But in certain situations, I'm not free to use any of these uh, alternatives. So these are called the situational context of the discourse. So for example, let's see what are the cases where I cannot use these uh, words or uh, references. So say, for example, the person to whom I'm talking to, the hearer, has no prior knowledge about my friend's car. He might not know what is that it or this or the Acura or the other cases if I've never mentioned about this to the hearer. So in that case also he might not know about what I'm talking. Then the third case is if that particular thing is not in the immediate surrounding, the discourse participant will not know what I'm talking about. So these are some cases where all these references might not be clear to the hearer. So let's look at the reason why the hearer is not able to understand such reference words. The reason is the referring expression encodes different signals about the place that the speaker believes the referent occupies within the hearer's set of beliefs. A subset of these beliefs that has a special status form the hearer's mental model of the ongoing discourse. This is called the discourse model. 
the discourse model contains representatives of the entities that have been referred to in the discourse and the relationships in which they participate. The discourse model has two fundamental components, which is required by a system to successfully produce and interpret the referring expressions. The first point is a method for constructing a discourse model that evolves with the dynamically changing discourse it represents. The second one is a method for mapping between the signals that varies referring expressions, encode, and the hero set of beliefs. There are two fundamental operations to the discourse model. The first one is evoking the second one is accessing so the first one is when a referent is first mentioned in a discourse we say that a representation for it is evoked into the model the second one is upon subsequent mention this representation is assessed from the model so here in our example rama always had a bow and arrows this is the first time we are using the word rama we are bringing him into the picture so it is called evoking the second time we are mentioning him using the word he he was the best archer in the whole universe so using the word he we are accessing it so these are the two fundamental operations to the discourse model so let's also see the example using an acura integra automobile so the entity is a car its brand name is acura its model name is integra the first time we are using the noun phrase a new Acura Integra to evoke it into the picture. The second time we are using the word it to refer it. So the second time we are using it, you call it accessing it. When you use a noun phrase a new Acura Integra and it to refer to the same entity, you call it co-refer. That is depicted in this picture. Discourses reference not just entities, they also include references to many other types of reference. So consider an example which is adapted from Weber 1991. So according to John, this is a statement and example. According to John, Bob bought Sue and Integra and Sue bought Fred a legend. So here, this is the first statement. If the second statement is but that turned out to be a lie. This that is referring to a speech act. Consider if the second statement is but that was false. This that is referring to a proposition. Is acting as a rep proposition. Now in the third case, if the second statement is that struck me as a funny way to describe the situation. So this that is a manner of description in the fourth case if the second statement will be that caused you to become rather poor this that will be referring as an event if in the fifth case the second statement will be that caused both that caused them both to become rather poor so this that will be a combination of several events reference phenomena so in order to understand the reference phenomena we will have to go through the various subdivisions so we have five types of referring expressions and three types of reference so the five types of referring expressions are indefinite noun phrases definite noun phrases pronouns demonstratives and a one anaphora there are three types of reference which actually complicates the reference resolution problem. They are inferables, discontinuous sets, and generics. Indefinite noun phrases. Indefinite reference introduces entities that are new to the hearer into the discourse context. The most common form of indefinite reference is marked with generally the determiner A or an. As in the example, I saw an Acura Integra today. It can also be marked by a quantifier such as sum, like some Acura 
integrals were being unloaded at the local dealership today or given with a determiner this wherein an example is I saw this awesome Acura Integra today. Such noun phrases evoke a representation for a new entity that satisfies the given description into the discourse model. Definite noun phrases. Definite reference is used to refer to an entity that is identifiable to the hearer either because the first one is it has already been mentioned in the discourse context. It is contained in the hearer's set of beliefs about the world or the second one is the uniqueness of the object is implied by the description itself. So the first one is let's see an example. I saw an Acura Integra today. The Integra was white and needed to be washed. So here in the second statement the Integra is the referent. So this is identifiable from the discourse context because Acura Integra is already mentioned. The second example, the Indianapolis 500 is the most popular car race in the US. The fastest car in the Indianapolis 500 was an Integra. Here you can see that the referent is either identifiable from the hearer set of beliefs or is inherently unique. Another form of definite reference is phenomenalization. So an example, I saw an Acura Integra today. It was white and needed to be washed. So the word it refers to Acura Integra. So this it is a pronoun. Pronouns usually refer to entities that were introduced no further than one or two sentences back in the ongoing discourse. Whereas definite noun phrases can often re refer further back. So let's see an example. John went to Bob's party and parked next to a beautiful Acura Integra. He went inside and talked to Bob for more than an hour. Bob told him that he recently got engaged. He also said that he bought it yesterday. Now, if this it is referring to Acura Integra, it is not relevant in this fourth statement. Instead, he also said that he bought the Acura yesterday. So here the Acura is the definite noun phrase. If it is used, it is a pronoun. So generally, if it is just one or two sentences back, we use pronoun. Otherwise, we generally go in for a definite noun phrase. Catapora. Catapora is the use of an expression or a word that co-refers to the later, more specific expression in the discourse. So pronouns can also participate in catapora. So in which they are mentioned before their reference. So in this example, before he bought it, John checked over the integra very carefully. So he and it is first place before John and the integra. So this is called catapora. So pronouns can participate in catapora. Pronouns also appear in quantified contexts in which they are considered to be bound. Every woman bought her Acura at the local dealership. Under the relevant reading, her does not refer to some women in context, but instead behaves like a variable bound to be quantified expression every woman. Demonstratives. Demonstrative pronouns like this and that behave somewhat differently than the simple definite pronouns like it. They can appear either alone or as determiners like uh, this Acura, that Acura, etc. The choice between two demonstratives is generally associated with some notion of spatial proximity. For example, this indicates closeness and that indicates distance. Spatial distance might be measured with respect to the discourse participants situation and context. So an example is John shows Bob an Acura Integra and a Mazar Uva. Bob points to one and says I like this better than that. So this can be the 
car which is near to him and that can be the car which which is far away from him. The second one is distance can be metaphorically interpreted in terms of conceptual relations in the discourse model. An example, I bought an Integra yesterday. It is similar to the one I bought five years ago. That one was really nice, but I like this one even better. So here, that one refers to the Acura bought five years ago, which is of greater temporal distance, whereas this one refers to the one bought yesterday, which has closer temporal distance. One anaphora explains the properties of definite and indefinite distance. Say for example, I saw no less than six Akira Integras today. Now I want one. So here in this example, the use of one can be roughly paraphrased by one of them, in which them refers to a plural referent. And one selects a member from this set. The other case is the use of one should be distinguished from the formal non-specific pronoun usage and its meaning as the number one. So the first example is one shouldn't pay more than $20,000 for an Acura. The second example is John has two Acuras but I only have one. So in the first example, one refers to a pronoun. The second in the second example, one refers to the number one. So, so far we have seen all the five types of referring expressions. The indefinite noun phrases, definite noun phrases, pronouns, demonstratives and one anaphora with examples. So, we will continue with the three types of reference which complicates the reference resolution problem. They are inferables, discontinuous sets, and generics. Inferables. So, inferables from the term, we can easily understand that something is being inferred. So, the definition when a referring expression does not refer to an entity that has been explicitly evoked in the text, instead, it refers to the one that is inferentially related to an evoked entity then such a referent is called inferables. So take the example, I almost bought an Acura Integra today, but a door had a dent and the engine seemed noisy. So here, a door, the engine, they are obviously inferring that they are a part of an Acura Integra. The second uh, way where inference, inferables can be uh, identified is they can also specify the results of processes described by utterances in a discourse. So take the example, mix the flour, butter and water. You have three steps, knead the dough until smooth and shiny, spread the paste over the blueberries, stir the batter until all lumps are gone. So in all the three steps, you have the words, the dough, the paste, the batter. So all of them refer to one or the other stage of result of the process, the process of mixing the flour, butter in the water. So some inference is being uh, made by the referent. Discontinuous sets. Sometimes references use plural referring expressions like they and them to refer to set of entities that are evoked together. For instance, using another plural expression or a conjoint noun phrase. So here, take an example. John and Mary love their Acuras. They drive them all the time. So here the plural expression is their Acuras and the conjoint noun phrase is John and Mary. The other way where this discontinuous sets are applicable are Plural references may also refer to sets of entities that have been evoked by discontinuous phrases in the text. So take, take an example, John has an Acura and Mary has a Mazda. They drive them all the time. So here in this example, they refers to John and Mary. So here the second statement is called a pairwise or res respective reading 
in which John drives the Acura and Mary drives the Mazda, as opposed to the reading in which they both drive both the cars. The last referent is degenerates. So take an example. I saw no less than six Acura Integras today. They are the coolest cars. So here the word they does not only in indicate six Acura Integras. It also specifically mentions the class of Integras in general. Apart from all this, we have few syntactic and semantic constraints on co-reference where we have to consider number agreement, person and case agreement, gender agreement, uh, syntactic agreement and selection and restriction. So we will see all these in detail in the forthcoming slides with examples. So first is number agreement where referring expressions and their reference must agree in number which means distinguishing between singular and plural references. So here we have some examples. John has a new Akira. It is red. John has three new Akiras. They are red. Uh, there are two other statements which do not match, which is John has a new Akira. They are red. Because it is a single Akira, it should be it is red. So the second one is John has three new Akiras. It is red. So again, here it doesn't match the singular and plural references. So here a tab table is given for the singular plural references. Person and case agreement. English basically distinguishes between three forms of person, first person, second person, and third person. Here we have a table to represent the English pronominal system. So nominative, accusative and genitative with respect to first person, second person and third person. We have uh, four examples. Two of them are wrong, the last two. So let's see the example. First example, you and I have Akira's, we love them. So you have two person, you and I. So it's we, we love them. The second one is John and Mary have Akira's. So it's third person. So they love them. So coming to the third statement, which is the wrong statement. John and Mary have Akira's. We love them. So here, we, we love them cannot be the correct uh, pronoun there. We is the wrong pronoun there. You and I have Akira's. They love them. Again, here, they and you and I does not match. English pronouns are constrained by case agreement where different forms of the pronoun may be required and placed in all the three positions. The first one is subject position, which is the nominative case. Example, he, she, they. The second one is object position, which is accusative case uh, with uh, reference to him, her, them, etc. The third one is the genitative position, which is his Akira, her Akira and their Akira. Next, you have the gender agreement. So we basically know this when you have the male, you refer it with him and you have a female, you refer it with her. So reference also must agree with the gender specified by the referring expression. English third person pronouns distinguish between male, female and non-personal genders. And unlike many languages, the first two only apply to animate entities. So here, here you have the table, you have masculine, feminine and non-personal. So we have two examples. John has an Akira. He is attractive. So this he refers to John and not Akira. John has an Akira. It is attractive. So this it refers to Akira. So here gender should, gender is agreed. The next one is syntactic constraints. So reference relations may also be constrained by the syntactic relationship between a referential expression and a possible antecedent noun phrase when both occur in the same sentence. 
so we have some examples so john bought himself a new akira so this himself is referring to john the second example you have john bought him a new akira so john bought him this him is referring to somebody else not john the third example you have john said that bill bought him a new akira here him does not refer to bill you can clearly see that then you have in the fourth example john said that bill bought himself a new akira again this himself here is referring to bill in the last example he said that he bought john a new akira so this he is not referring to john english pronouns such as himself herself and themselves are called reflexives so a reflexive co refers with the subject of the most immediate clause that contains it whereas a non reflexive cannot co refer with its subject so here in this example you have uh, the first statement where john bought himself a new akira so this himself is referring to john so here it co refers but in the second example john bought himself a new akira john bought him a new akira so here him does not co refer with john so this is called non reflexive in the first case where john is referring to himself i mean himself is referring to john is called uh, reflexive preferences in pronoun interpretation the first one is recency so whichever entity is recently mentioned so a referent generally mentions it so an example john has an integra bill has a legend mary likes to drive it so this it is uh, most probably the legend which is uh, mentioned at the later stage the second one is grammatical role so john went to the acura dealership with bill he bought an acura so here he is referring to john in the second example bill went to the acura dealership with john he bought an integra so here obviously he is referring to bill in the third example john and bill went to the acura dealership he bought an acura so here you cannot interpret if he is referring to john or to bill so these are the grammatical roles how these reference take the entity the third one is repeated mention to so give uh, based on the repeated mention referent takes the entity so here in this example john needed a car to get to his new job he decided that he wanted something sporty bill went to the acura dealership with him he bought an integra so he he is referring to john because the first statement talks about john the second statement talks about john and third statement also talks about john so because of repeated mention it's obvious that this he is mentioning john is being mentioned by he parallelism mary went with you to akira dealership sally went with her to the mazda dealership here her is referring to sue because sue is going with mary and again sue is going with sally so the parallelism in the second case mary went with sue to the acura dealership sally told her not to buy anything so here we can easily identify that her is referring to mary so this is the role of parallelism finally we have verb semantics so john telephone bill he lost the pamphlet on acuras so here he is referring to john in the second case john criticized bill he lost the pamphlet on acuras so here he is referring to bill here the basic difference is only those verbs telephone and criticized they play the role on which referent is referring to the particular entity so so far we have gone through all the problems faced with uh, using these kind of reference and referring expressions now it is as a human it is easy to identify what referent is referring to which entity or the referring expression 
but making a system understand these kind of uh, referent uh, referring to a particular expression is really difficult so we have uh, lots of algorithms to resolve such reference uh, problems so uh, the most common algorithms are uh, for prolonged resolution lapin and lessee algorithm and there is another algorithm which is a tree search algorithm by hops these are the most popular we also have a centering algorithm where there is a single entity being centered on at any given point in the discourse which is to be distinguished from all other entities that have been evoked there are several other algorithms so um, they are the actual resolutions of references so we we'll finish it off with a small recap we started with an introduction of uh, understanding what is uh, reference what is resolution then we went on with uh, multiple terminologies used to understand it a referent a reference expression and all that then we understood what is discourse context what is discourse model what are the various components of discourse model and we had two fundamental uh, discourse model operations then um, discourses not only reference entities but also other types of reference we saw few examples for that then we saw the reference phenomena under which we had five types of referring expressions and three types of reference finally we also saw syntactic and semantic constraints on co-reference and a few preferences in pronoun interpretation so apart from this there are these are the problems so we uh, also saw that there are so many algorithms to resolve all these uh, reference uh, references thank you